Iglesia Filipina Independiente, Obispado Maximo. The Obispado Maximo is reissuing here the Obispo Maximo's sermon last May 8, year 2018, entitled Gregorio Aglipay, God's Gift and Blessing to IFI, as its message continues on one hand to provide lessons on the life, ministry, and contributions of Bishop Aglipay that inspires us as IFI, and on the other, to challenge us as church to live out his ideals and aspirations in pursuing our corporate mission, even in these times of continuing pandemic, persisting tyranny, and worsening economy. The Obispo Maximus sermon truly befits the continuing call and reminder for us that Bishop Aglipay is God's gift and blessing upon which the life, faith, and witness of the IFI has drawn inspiration and meaning. The gospel we have just heard is taken from St. John chapter 15, verse 9 to 15. And it is the gospel reading of the sixth Sunday of Easter, May 6, year 2018. I am glad that this is the same gospel being read today as we observe the significance of May 8, a red letter day of our liturgical historical ordo calendar. The last line of the gospel reading that says, I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fits well for this occasion. For today, we remember and celebrate the life and ministry of a great person whom God has chosen and appointed. We praise and glorify God today by calling to mind God's gift and blessing to the Filipino people in general and to the Philippine Church in particular. That is Gregorio Aglipay, a revolutionary priest, a church reformer, and to us IFI, a founding father, and the first supreme bishop. Various historians and writers described Gregorio Aglipay in many ways and gave him accolades of all sorts, either to regard him as hero or as a villain. In fact, Ambrosio Manaligod, a historian and book writer, asked this question by giving one of his books the title Gregorio Aglipay, Hero or Villain. But to us as members of the church, which he founded and led, he is simply God's gift and blessing, upon which the life, faith, and witness of the IFI has drawn inspiration and meaning. Gregorio Aglipay is God's gift to us as IFI. Without him, the IFI's eruption into history could not take place within the womb of the Filipino people's struggle for national identity, independence, and integrity. His role and participation in the Philippine Revolution enabled the IFI to situate its beginning in the struggle of the Filipino people. And this beginning afforded the IFI the right to speak for the Filipinos and to represent every Filipino's aspiration to be truly a human person. Because of this, we carry in the educational work of our advocacy the so-called, quote-unquote, Philippine religious nationalism to articulate our conviction that the whole struggle of the Filipino people as embodied in the Philippine Revolution and its continuing spirit expresses the Filipino sense of nationalism that is anchored in the struggle for attaining an identity, independence, and integrity as a people and nation. Gregorio Aglipay is God's blessing to us IFI because with his contribution to our national history, we inherited the legacy that enriched our vocation as a church. This is the legacy of Prodeo et Patria, 
a legacy that circumscribes service for God and country, a legacy that described worship as inseparable from service, a legacy that ensured journeying with the struggling people for freedom from foreign domination, for national sovereignty, for self-determination, a legacy that cherished solidarity with the people, especially the poor, and the solidarity that nurtured the participation of all. As both God's gift and blessing to the IFI, we had a patent in him, in Gregorio Aglipay, as regards on how we as a church shape ourselves and pattern our ways of being, doing, and becoming as a church in consonance to the mind and will who quote-unquote, called and loved it and have offered himself for it, Jesus Christ, our Lord. From a prayer for convention, for church convention. As both God's gift and blessing to the IFI, we had in Gregorio Aglipay an ideal, an aspiration, a vision to become a church that God intends to be for his people and nation. Through and by this legacy, the IFI strives hard to mold itself as a church that incarnates God's liberating love to the world. And as a consequence to this liberating love, the IFI provides strong witness to Christ's salvific work amongst its people, particularly among those belonging to the underside of history. So today... We honor a great man, a man whom God has chosen and appointed for his purpose. We remember him and celebrate his life and ministry today, May 8, which is actually his baptismal day. Although Gregorio Aglipay was born on May 5, 1860 in Batak, Ilocos Norte, but May 8 has become the traditional date to celebrate his birth. Critics of the IFI make this celebration as an issue, accusing us of promoting a historical error in their attempt to vilify Gregorio Aglipay and discredit his church. But we in the IFI believe otherwise. We believe that this celebration is not a historical error. Instead, we understand this celebration as perfectly theological because it highlighted Gregorio Aglipay's spiritual birth, that through his baptism, Gregorio Aglipay was born anew in baptism, like any other Christian, to be incorporated to the body of Christ, clothed with the life and character of the Lord and doer of the mission of Jesus, which is the agenda of God. His spiritual birth in baptism interestingly fell on the feast of one of the church fathers, Gregory of Nazianzus, who was known for his defense of the church by keeping it faithful to its mission and doctrinal teachings, especially on the Holy Trinity. From this third century, bishop and theologian, Aglipay did get his first name and did source his desire and courage in working out to reform the church so that it may not only become consistent to its faith and doctrines, faithful to its vocation and mission, but also truthful to people and nation, where the church is found in order to advocate for their identity, independence, and integrity. As we praise and thank God today for the life, ministry, and example of Gregorio Aglipay, we also have to look for and find his relevance in our being IFI nowadays. And the gospel is providing us the insight in doing it. Verse 16 says, and we quote, I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, and so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you, unquote. Today's gospel then is directing us to understand that God had chosen and appointed Gregorio Aglipay 
and had given him to the IFI so that as a church, we may have the pattern in going to serve God and to bear fruit. This is the biblical injunction for us to go to fulfill our mission. And in doing our mission, we are expected to bear fruit. That is, to show and demonstrate, to bring to concrete terms the deeds and actions of the Lord God. To bear fruit, then, is to undertake what God and Jesus Christ intends us to do among His people. Thus, the IFI is challenged by the Spirit, aspiration and vision of Gregorio Aglipay, to bear fruit, the fruit that will describe and symbolize our work, our mission, and our ministry in consonance to God's purpose. Today, the bishops of our church start their meeting, and it is our hope that our Episcopal leaders may design measures and programs that will push the IFI to bear fruit, to bring his purpose to reality, his purpose of justice and peace and righteousness. It is our hope that in bearing fruit in the midst of our society, the IFI becomes consistent to the message of today's gospel and to the example of Gregorio Aglipay. To pursue this, we in the IFI hopes to spell out the word fruit in our deeds and actions upon which we are to A. Fight for justice and peace towards resolution of the conflict and peace in our situation and allow justice and peace flow like living streams in our midst. B. Restore human dignity among our people in a society characterized by killings and death, by persecution and harassment, by dehumanization, oppression, and exploitation. Unite with other faith communities, people's organizations, and churches, both nationwide and worldwide, to advance God's reign. D. Integrate with the life and of the marginalized sectors of our society, that we may continue to feel the pulse for freedom, justice, peace, and liberation. And E. To transform human conditions and social structures that promote social injustice and peace and the secretion of sanctity of life and in the integrity of God's creation. Though it is true that these deeds and actions are easily said and done, but today's gospel gives us the assurance that if we ask God's assistance, God will, and with all his power, grant these all to us. By all our efforts to be faithful and obedient to his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And so today, as we glorify God in giving us Gregorio Aglipay, let us give him honor by committing ourselves as a church to work and endeavor for his ideals aspiration, and vision. Let us undertake these deeds and actions as bearing our fruit to be our corporate offering to the Lord of justice and history and ask Him to help us, renew us, sustain us and bless us in all these endeavors. Today, in this gathering, that is our prayer. Let us all then pray for that to happen in our midst and hope all of us here in this gathering say Amen. Signed, Rimiliana Timbang, Obispo Maximo. <laughs>